所有面试。Hello. Hello. Good. Hello. Hi, Gordon. Good. 那你更准确。不好意思，因为我这这么热，要给二十分钟热身。Okay. Guys, just a few things for me. It's a big day for the football club. We're really excited to have Gordon coming in as the the technical director. The ambition of the club is always to to go to our highest level, and we can't get a better person than Gordon Strachan to come in and be your, your technical director. So I know you don't want to speak to me. So without further ado, Gordon, it's all you. On you go. Sorry. Gordon, first of all, why did you decide to come back here to London? Because I love football. And I've got so many ideas buzzing about my head, and I've had two, well, 20 years of thinking youth football, and, and two years really research and putting thoughts in on paper of today on your computer. Um, and it's a place where I started, and, and I, I was fortunate to be, um, I've shown two or three people, three people this paper, and, and from different parts of the world, because there's things in there that I think. Um, they can be used anywhere in the world, no matter what your facilities are. Um, but this was the best for us because it was I could do, put my ideas and philosophies together, and John was giving me that, and Dundee had given me that to put down and to practice. And there's a reality about it now. But also that allowed us as a family to stay as a unit. Um, other places, different, completely different. And it would have been great, I'm sure it would have been enjoyable, but it would have only been enjoyable for me really. <laughs> Not so much my wife. Um, and, I, and I think when you're doing something, it, 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 your whole family has to be happy with it. And um, we, uh, we know the area very well, and we like the area, and um, it's regenerating itself. As you can see, if you come to Dundee, it's completely different from when I. When I was here, I was both of still the same to be honest with you. Um, so um, that was the reason, and uh, so uh, we, we we feel privileged that we're, we're going to be allowed to have another phase in our family life. It's going to be exciting and enjoyable, and and hard work again. And, uh, so I thank Dundee uh, and John in particular for allowing us to do this. So these ideas and philosophies that you've got, are these things that you've been working on since your time as Scotland manager? And before year? that, before that, um, but in the last two years, um, it's been incredibly hectic for us. But as I say, we do everything as a family, so the has went around the world with me as well, meeting new people. And what we've discovered is that there's not one academy system that fits all. The... Um, Everybody's got different problems, whether it's culture, genetics, everything, um, finances. Uh, so we know that now, after I've done all that. And I've really enjoyed the research. I've not copied anybody. Um, no, I think I'm, I think I, I'm not copying anybody in terms of what they do on the football field. I've got ideas what they want. But I was just out asking these coaches and people who, who just research youth football all around the world, what was their problems? I just found they're all different problems, but in there, there is links to, there's similarities to a lot of things, but we've all, they all had different problems with them. Teams who are financially huge still have problems, and teams like Dundee, who haven't, they have financial problems, they have other problems. But we have other assets as well, so there's there's no one way to go to make an academy. So there's no simple answer, but what do you take from all of that to bring here to Dundee? How do clubs like Dundee bring on youth players? Well, there's, the, 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 there's, there's small things that you have to encompass everybody. My, my job is to make... The philosophy is the player. It's not the team, it's not the system. It is the player. Producing a great player, two great players, three great players, and the fact that they can't be great players, but produce them who have an understanding of what, how great players think, what great players have to go through to get to the, the top level. Um, so that's it. It's all about the player. Um, systems doesn't matter about the systems because the systems will change over the years. And um, but the, the ability to control the ball, mentally strong, fitness, awareness. 
all these kind of things doesn't change for the top footballer. And obviously, having been the Scotland manager, you know how important it is to have young Scottish players at your disposal. Yeah. Um, how, how important is it that... Well, when you see a great one, you get them in right away. Kieran played a couple of games with Celtic, bang, you're in. Robertson's the same, bang, you're in. Um, when you see great ones, you're right, you're in. Burke, Oliver Burke, he played five games at uh, Notch Forge, you bang, you're in. So you can see somebody that's... You've got, so, so I was never scared to play these youngsters. Um, but what I want to do now is, is produce top, top players. But we can only produce top, top players if we've got best coaches. So we're working with the coaches as well. We can only do that with the help of the families themselves, the understanding what kids have to go through. And we'll be looking after the families as well, because the less stressful it is for the family, the less stressful it is for the player who's at the academy. So we'll try to take all the stress away from them as well. So they have to be part of it as well, the family. Gordon, you left Dundee, I think it was 42 years ago. As a, a player, did you envisage in that time coming back in, in some capacity? been part of the club again? Well, when I left Dundee at the time, me and Liz thought, well, if we, if, if we can stay in the game at about 32, uh, 33, maybe open a sports shop in St Andrews, that'll be magnificent, or a fish and chip shop in our broth. But the, because of who I've played with and the good players I've played with, and uh, I've ended up coming back 42 years later, having an incredible lifestyle and fun lifestyle. And all I want to do now is, is uh, can I give families, players, that kind of satisfaction, that kind of excitement. I want them to have a wee bit of what I've had because the memories and the games are so huge and so fantastic and so you can always go back to these. I just hope that we can set players off into that path. You've spent the last 20, 25 years in the dugout and the, the training ground as a manager. Also being a granddad who has boys at an academy, I've also been a father We've had boys at academy, so I know how stressful it can be as well. So I, I, I coached at youth level at Leeds. I took reserve team at Coventry Leeds. So I've been right through the whole gambit up to uh, Champions League and working with magnificent players. And I know how... So I've got this in a locker that I know what it takes to be a Scott Brown, a Nakamura, a Neil Lennon. You know, I know what you need to get to that level what you have to sacrifice to the game. Um, Robbie Keane's, Gary McAllister's. Uh, so there's no shortcut to being one of the players. It really is all doing the hard work and having a humility and, and being a, a decent person who wants to work harder than anybody else. Do you feel the management side of your career is now over and this is the next step you've left that behind? And Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, yeah. I, I, I've been annoyed with myself, I couldn't, the ideas that I've put together over the last couple of years, I put them aside and went, man, that's good, let's go in and play some golf or let's go somewhere else, let's go and see Gracelands, right, okay, which we're still going to do, right. <laughs> um, which we'll all do, um, but I would have got annoyed with myself because I've always wanted to, uh, as a captain, as a, a coach, as a manager, I've always just wanted to eke out the best and people that I work with. I think it's a great satisfaction. You're speaking mostly about the academy. There's a, obviously a young manager here in, in James McPake. Do you envisage working closely with him as well and, and being a guide to him, or is it very much allowing him to be his own Oh, he's own got to manager. be his own man. But I'm here for anybody who has a situation that I might have been involved with. You know, John might have something at a transfer deal that I've been involved with. Well, what do you think? I don't care. Okay. You can handle that. Um, James, yes, definitely if he needs my help, um, but that only if he needs it in big problems. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't need me at all. Um, but I'm there. I'm there for anybody, any coach um, at the club, and it'd be um, it'd be stupid of me in the club to not use that knowledge I've gained over the. Because most of the problems come round and round again to managers over whether it be 30, 40 years. It, the cycle's the same. You have the same problems. So, yeah, it'll be, that'll be great. If, if James needs me, I'm there. Absolutely. Um, but in the background. I'm, I'm well away for things. There's games that I'm not even going to be there. There'll be other things to do. Trust me. And uh, 
I'll not be around the dressing room, absolutely not. And um, if he needs to see me after a game, I prefer we all went home, had a cup of tea, and then we met up next again day rather. And I think it's the best thing to talk is when everybody calms down. How Go. much potential do you feel that Dundee has as a football club? Obviously, they're desperate now to be back in yeah. top flight. Uh, depends. It, it, it all depends on. It's not so much the, the club itself, it's the people who work at the club, how how desperate they are to improve. Uh, if the players want to improve, great. Coaches, as I say, but it's the coaching of the, the younger coaches or, uh, and the players that are, I'm involved in. So it's, it's all down to the drive of us as a group. It can't be just one, two, three, it's the lot, I guess. And we have to find out who are the ones who really want to go and push themselves beyond where they think they can go. Because I, th I think that. Especially in the football world, hard work is, is determined sometimes with a uh, fitness coach. It's not really. It's determining you. I, said, I look back at Gary McAllister and where he took himself when he went to Leeds. That was driven on by players who dragged him along in training. Vinnie Jones, Chris Kramara, myself, Gary Speed, we all made sure that we, we took the training to a different level. We never had a fitness coach. So Gary got fitter at 27. I think it would be in a, a modern world win. That's enough for you, Gary. I think your heart rate's up to that. Yeah. I think you can push yourself in new levels. It's Go the same with players. Sorry. Gordon, you've got many years' experience as a winner throughout your career. I've also How been a loser. Indeed. You know, because you know, I, I, I hate when people say that oh, I'm a winner. No, no. You know, I beat you. I beat you 6 1 somewhere along the line. Um, what you can do is compete. Yeah. And, and, and that is different from being a winner. There's no embarrassment in getting beat if you're competed. Uh, so, sorry, I don't. I, 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 no, just, no, no I hate that word, that winner thing, you know. And you get guys that won mm -hmm. the English League Cup in 1982 no, and say I'm a winner. That's all you've won. You, you, Kenny Douglas never tells you how much he's won. You, you obviously have a, always won stuff. Indeed, you, you obviously have a winning mentality. How important could that be I've in, in your new role? Mentality. A competitive mentality. How important is that in but your it was, new role? It was just brought up in the new role. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to go and say to somebody you better compete um, you, you, it's built up inside you from 8 year old, 9 year old there are circumstances it builds your character which makes you a competitor um, as I was saying earlier on that I was going to a, a club who has no issues with money whatsoever got everything but they have problems developing characters because they have everything mm. so uh, that shouldn't be a problem here because we do not, we're far from having everything. So character really shouldn't be a real problem. You know? It shouldn't be a real problem. Obviously it'd be great to see the club bounce back to the top flight at the first attempt. How much are you relishing what should be a, a very exciting championship title race next season? I wish them everybody good luck in the first team. <laughs> but I'll be too busy with other things. I will give them a maximum support. Um, but that's it's not really my remit, to be honest with you. Gordon, the academy system in, in Scotland and in Britain generally is it's maybe got something of a bad name, maybe some of the criticisms being that you take kids out of school teams and they actually yeah. end up playing less football exactly. than before. Yeah. How I'm, a, I'm a big believer in playing schoolboy football. Is, is that how and your youth, academy and, would differ perhaps? And, youth, football. Up, and, and youth football, I think when Brian McClare it was a great move with Brian to say, right, let's reduce the numbers and put in academies and get them back to playing like Hutchison Vale and things like that in the Edinburgh and teams up here. Don't it's the ferry, is it? Yeah. So get back to there and play. Get, get game time rather than travel all around in, in Scotland and sit on your backside and only get 10 minutes of football. I think it's more important that I'd love to see the schoolboy football back, more youth football and implement it with academy football. I, I think it's there's a place for that. Um, because we don't have the space and green space now that used to have the ton of ball players, but there are still ways we can get them to reenact that in a safe environment. And school's one of them. I, I love school football. You could, there was no coaching, you just loved it, and you could go and imagine whoever you were Pat Stanton, Jimmy Johnston, you know, Peter Cormack. I could be anybody I wanted at school. Uh, and youth football, youth football was great because. We all went along there with one mentality just to win a game of football. No period of being burnt the guy next to me in the academy. 
So I think it's, it's I've not got a problem with schoolboy football. I think it should be more schoolboy football and have more kids go back to playing in youth football and, and, and streaming your academy kids. Do you see this as kind of a perfect match because you were keen to come back to mm. Dundee but uh, you have all your ideas for the academy and, and John is uh, really determined to get the youth system going here. Yeah, it's, it's, as I say, it's, it's perfect for me. Um, I don't know how perfect it's got to be for John, but it's perfect for me. Um, and so I appreciate that. And I've, you know, it's, there's no many places uh, that you go to that you can get a, 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 a clear canvas to go and start working, to do what you want to do. And uh, I appreciate that. And I'll do my best to produce players and coaches that, are, that can make Dundee successful and in the long run make Scotland more successful. Uh, it's as simple as that. And that would give me great um, great satisfaction if I could do that. And as I said, I just want to see players um, and, and, and families looking back going, right, okay, we've had a good career and we went to places where we didn't think we could go. Is there nothing better than making your mum and dad proud of you if you play for Scotland or played 100 games for Dundee or got transferred to one of the best clubs in the world from here. The Scotland job's obviously the most, pretty much the most, the most intense job in the in the country. No. Or, or the other job, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> one of the two. You've had no, them no. both. But uh, did you feel? No, like, that was great for us. Did you feel like you needed the, the break from them? Presumably, you've had offers between then and now. Did you just need a, a bit of break from football after that experience? Uh, no, I was okay. I was, I was fine, good. Uh, but as again, it's allowed me. People think, oh, you're not being been so busy, I mean so busy, we had about, I think six months ago we said, listen, this is crazy, we need to stay in the house a bit, you know, so um, we've been to great places, strange places, met strange people, met great people, um, but most of the people I met, we had this love of the game of trying to make players better, that was, that was good. I've met people that you've never heard of, who are incredible experts in youth football. They're some of the top people in the world at youth football. And um, maybe picked up one or two wee things for them. Did so it's been a great experience. Sorry. Sorry. Did you have any other interesting offers? Yep. Can you tell us anything about them? Not really. <laughs> 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 They're from different parts of the world, that's for sure. And with some in management, and the people have shown the uh, things I've done. and. and and this, but completely, Dundee is in the middle of the two other options. I found three people in the paper, and there were just two different parts of the world. Yeah. Was it the fact that this is a kind of blank canvas for you? Was that one of the big attractions? Yeah, that, and as I said earlier, that um, it keeps my family yeah. together. We've enjoyed this um, about five, six years ago. We moved back to Midlands there to be around my grandchildren. I think best move I've ever made, um, and we want to keep that that going because it. it for all I love football, that I have a, a, a great family and a funny family, and it, they kind of regenerate me every time I, I meet them. So um, that was we could stay as a group. If we went to different places, I think we'd been isolated from the family, and also uh, probably a wee bit more isolated from my wife as well. So that wasn't going to happen. So this is one of the reasons I'm here. We've seen in the last couple of years clubs like Hamilton and Falkirk bring through players um, and the championship has been mainly where they've kind of learned their trade. Do you feel it's a good division for youngsters to come through and really get to grips with professional what, men's what, football? What I do feel, I think, you're talking about, I think you look at Hamilton, you're talking about James MacArthur, McCarthy, um, that's about 10, 12 years ago. Um, that um, what they've done, these players, it's not so much the academies or the clubs, but they played football at an early age. James MacArthur and MacArthur were playing 17, 18, whatever it was. So they played football at a very important age. I think if you get past the age of 20 and you don't play regular football, it's got to be hard for you. You need to be playing football at an early age and play reality football, not the clinical under 23s where nobody knows what the score was on a Tuesday afternoon, you turn up, there's no crowd, and nobody raises their voice, you. That, that doesn't count in anybody's uh, character building. I think what, what James and McCarthy and, and even John McGinn, they, they had to, reality, I think even Andy had to go back and play 
Queen's Park, Andy Robertson. So if you even look at David Beckham, he went to Preston when he was a kid. So reality football is a, a must for progression for, for young players. Talking of young players, I mean, is it more of a challenge these days to keep young players focused on football with all the other things that they've become involved with? The pool of players to work with now is a lot less than it was when the best player in the world, the best player in Scotland's time ever was born was Ken Dalglish. It's nearly half male birth rates from when Kenny was born, plus he, we have problems with all sorts of things here in Scotland. I think it was obesity the other day, they were at the top of Europe and obesity charts and all sorts of things. So, And there's other things you say that, to take the attention of the kids away, that's for sure. So the pool is shorter, so that's why we have to work harder with the, the, the smaller pool than we will get. And what message would you give to youngsters to come along to Dundee Football Club to become involved in this club? Um, I, I, would, I would say not to the, just the the, um, the, um, the player. It's the whole the family. Uh, we've got to look after that's because I've been in that environment, <laughs> so I know the the stre how stressful it can be for families. So we've got to try and take all that pressure off them. So it's only an enjoyment of the kid, and they can enjoy the kid and join themselves as well. Um, what we've got to do, I need to speak to the families for us, but we've got to work hard. There's no shortcuts for this. Uh, it's got to be enjoyable. Um, whatever I've coached, anyone who's me coaching, I have to enjoy myself at the same time. I have to bring, make sure the coach understand that. It's not that serious. I think, it's like myself, I don't take myself serious, but I take what I do serious. I think that's a kind of philosophy that'd be good for them. And I want the coaches to use their imagination and, and the families to be part of what we're going to do as well. It's important that the families buy into it. Gordon, since you left the uh, Scotland job on the national team, you've had some tough times. Do you sense now with Steve Clark in there that, that perhaps uh, the right man is there and, and they can start moving forward? I suppose I've seen Steve the other day there. Um, he seems a relaxed man. You can see he wasn't a full time manager as such anymore. He was enjoying himself. Um, circumstances, you need players, you need a good group of players, you need to keep a good players fit. We are strong in areas, we are weak in other areas. And uh, Steve has been in a, a lot of clubs and uh, we trust him now, that could put the faith in him. How was it for you then, obviously the months after you left, Alex came in, a guy you know very well, you obviously had a very good relationship with your Scotland players. Yeah. How, how hard was it to see things not going so well for him and the, and the pressure that he came under? I speak to him a lot and I think it's only fair that um, I speak to him Matter of fact, he texts us too much, actually. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, so uh, I speak to him a lot, and whatever we say, we try. But I think people like Alec and other managers, they just want to be left now. They don't want to see their name in the, the paper. And I think that's what Alec wants to do now. But he's uh, he's at his funny best again. That's for sure. <laughs>